Earlier on today, I was shown a photograph of a note someone had taped to someone's Tesla Model 3. It warned about overcharging the car in hot weather and cautioned the owner that their car could burst into flames if not properly looked after. Just this weekend, I heard anecdotal evidence of car park attendants turning away electric cars from using their parking garage because they were worried about those cars catching fire while parked. And of course, the stream of comments from Shouty Bob complaining about how electric cars are going to blow everything up, and the, yes I kid you not, smart person who tried telling us this weekend that it was child abuse to carry a child in an electric car because fires. All of these things have one thing in common, the reaction to a number of electric vehicle fires around the world in recent years. Fires which, for the most part, have been focused on Chevrolet Bolt EVs and Hyundai Kona EVs, two electric vehicles which have found themselves at the heart of a massive, interconnected global recall after it was discovered both vehicles had a faulty battery pack that, under certain circumstances, could lead to those battery packs catching fire. Of course, I'm sure you know the basics of the story by now. Both cars use battery packs supplied by LG Energy, a company that has come under quite a lot of heat lately for allowing a number of manufacturing defects to make it through the quality control process, into customers' cars, and, in the case of a couple dozen examples between each vehicle, these cars have caught fire. But it's not just Chevrolet Bolt EVs and Hyundai Kona EVs that are affected. There are a number of other electric vehicles on sale today that use LG Energy battery packs, including the Volkswagen ID3, an example of which, as we reported recently, appeared to spontaneously burst into flames while parked up and charging in the Netherlands. Audi, which uses LG Energy cells in its e-tron SUV, has also suffered some issues with its battery packs, as has Porsche's Taycan and even Ford's Mustang Mach-E. The common thread? LG Energy. Earlier today, General Motors confirmed that it has temporarily stopped all Bolt EV and Bolt EUV production until it can source battery packs for all affected Bolt EV and Bolt EUV models in the wild in the latest and most severe of its faulty battery recall campaigns. Worse still, it says it is still waiting to get those modules from LG Energy. Quote, we will not resume repairs or restart production until we are confident LG is producing defect-free products for us, a GM spokesperson said earlier today in a statement. Given many of these automakers currently do not have their own functioning battery facilities that are independent of LG, in fact, GM has shared production facilities with LG, much as Tesla and Panasonic shared production facilities, and given the ongoing chip shortages making everything 10 times worse, we've heard from plenty of you with one simple question. Is it safe to buy an electric car with an LG Energy battery pack right now? Today, I'm going to look into some of the incidents, look into some of the important factors you might not know, and hopefully give you enough data to make your own subjective decisions by the end of this video. First, let's deal with the statistical elephant in the room. Of the tens of thousands of Bolt EVs, Bolt EUVs, and Kona EVs made, only a tiny proportion of them have actually caught fire. In the case of the Bolt EV, a total of 140,000 Bolt EVs and Bolt EUVs have been made and recalled. In fact, all of them are subject to this current recall. And approximately so far, a dozen have caught fire. The statistics for the Kona EV are pretty similar. To put it bluntly, if you're worried about the risk of fire, you're talking about a three in three and a half thousand chance of having an issue if you were to ignore all of the advice completely and carry on using your car as before. Those are slim odds, which might explain why Recurrent recently said it estimates 30% of all Bolt EV owners are just ignoring GM's advice on restricting their Bolt EV charging and usage behavior until all affected battery packs have been replaced. But at the same time, if you're someone with an EV that has an LG Energy battery pack and you're involved in either of these two recalls, you'll be more than well aware of the frustration of A, being caught up in this mess at the first place, and B, being forced to decide between complying with recall recommendations or throwing caution to the wind and taking the chances on the nose. 
Obviously, if you're following the official advice on the Bolt EV recall, for example, which we would advise you do, you'll only be charging your car to 90% full, parking it outside and away from your home, and not dropping the car's remaining range below 70 indicated miles, 130 kilometers. And this means that the utility of your vehicle has almost halved from what its official range estimate was when new. If you're in that situation, you're someone who's already purchased an affected car, and like the tens of thousands of customers in the same boat, you're stuck waiting for a resolution. It's frustrating, bothersome, and probably a little scary. For some people, it may even mean they can't use their car for the purposes they bought it for. Customers with 2017 through 2019 Bolt EVs have, of course, had to deal with all of the above for a while, but their frustration, no doubt, got a whole lot worse when all model years of Bolt EV and Bolt EUV were added to that recall last week, as some had hoped to swap their older Bolt for a newer, supposedly known good car under an MSRP swap. Now, pretty much every Bolt EV and Bolt EUV owner is in the same boat, just waiting for the fix or a buyback. And at least for those who are willing to wait, GM says they'll get new 65 kilowatt hour battery packs in their cars, meaning they'll have a longer range than they originally had when they purchased their car. That is, of course, if you trust that the LG Energy battery packs made to replace the faulty ones will actually be free of faults and will become available in a reasonably timely manner. But what about those other EV brands out there? What about vehicles from other manufacturers that use LG Energy battery packs? Well, it's complicated, really complicated, and frankly, way above my pay grade, but let's give it a go. And a disclaimer, I'm not an electrical engineer, nor an electrochemist. So if I get stuff wrong, please tell me in the comments. At the most basic level, faulty cells are faulty cells, and given the fact that both the Kona EV and Bolt EV suffered very similar anode problems and separator problems, it doesn't look good for all energy supplied pouch cells, especially as the issue now seems present across multiple facilities owned by LG Energy. The Kona EV battery packs that caught fire were made in Nanjing, China. The Bolt EV battery packs that caught fire were made in South Korea, and in the case of two recent fires, the US. And the Volkswagen ID3 that recently caught fire in the Netherlands? Its battery pack came from a facility in Poland, though again, the cause of that ID3 fire hasn't been confirmed as being the battery pack. In other words, this fault is either a machine fault that's replicated across multiple facilities, or it's a failure in human quality control measures. And yes, cars like the Mustang Mark E also use battery packs, in this case, ones made by LG in Poland, which does kind of make you wonder. But stop, because buying cells from one manufacturer doesn't mean that every automaker will get the same form factor cells. LG, for example, currently makes at least three different cell chemistries and formats for use in the EV world. Earlier this year, Push EVs covered the three different form factor cells that were then in production by LG Energy. The original LGX E63 cells, which were known for being pretty poor in terms of energy density, and used an NCM622 chemistry. That's nickel, cobalt, and manganese in a 6 to 2 to 2 ratio, respectively. These are the cells found in the 2016 Renault Zoe with a 41 kilowatt hour battery pack, for example. I think they were also used in the Volt and also the Chevy Spark. Meanwhile, the batteries found in the Chevrolet Bolt and Kona EV are believed to be LG's E66A cells, which use an NCM712 chemistry. And disclaimer here, that might be wrong. I've spent hours researching, and this is the best guess I can come up with right now, because battery manufacturers tend to be kind of quite private about how their cells are actually made. The Mustang Marquis, meanwhile, it's not clear which LG pouch cells it uses, but again, we do know it's some kind of NCM cell of some sort. We just don't know exactly which ratios are indeed the specifics for those cells. Then you've got the issue of battery management and battery use. Each automaker uses a different battery management system, and every automaker has made a different decision about what's okay and not okay for the battery pack. You see, even if a car has a battery pack that is physically capable of storing 
a certain amount of energy, its nominal capacity, you rarely get to use that all. Unlike your mobile phone, which has to last a few years, and if it runs down on charge a bit sooner than when new, you may not even notice, the battery packs in electric cars need to last a lot longer and to perform a lot better for a lot longer. And one way those batteries are prematurely aged is when they are discharged too heavily or pushed too hard or charged all the way to full. So in order to provide a better lifespan, automakers purposely don't let you charge all the way up to full or fully discharge the battery. The onboard battery management system might make you think you've got 100% full, but technically your battery isn't anywhere near. And it still has a little buffer at the top, and it has one at the bottom. And yes, for folks who are wondering, that does mean that your car will say that you are out of power and actually stop working even though technically there is still some charge in the battery pack. That is effectively the battery management system inconveniencing you for now to protect your battery's lifespan for later. The buffer protects the battery and ensures it has a long life. It helps prevent the battery cell's state of charge within a pack from drifting too far from one another, because within a battery pack, you'll get strong cells and weak cells that discharge at ever so slightly different rates. And how much that buffer is depends on the automaker, the battery chemistry, and a whole host of other things. GM, for example, appears to have a maximum of about three kilowatt hours of battery buffer out of a total 60 kilowatt hours in the early Bolt EV battery packs. In fact, less if you talk to some folks. Meanwhile, the Ford Mustang Mark E long range pack, which is 99 kilowatt hours nominal, only actually lets you use 88 kilowatt hours. So the Bolt EV has a buffer that's about 5% of the total battery capacity, while the Mark E uses about 11% of the total battery capacity. And the more buffer your battery pack uses, it's generally less likely to get to a point where the battery will do things that it shouldn't. And that means it's less likely that manufacturing defects rear their ugly head. And then we have cooling. And the same is true there. Some battery packs have better cooling and thermal management than others. And even if it's a battery pack with an effective cell, which I personally think is more widespread than we actually realize, a battery that is under less strain because it's not discharged or charged as heavily or pushed as hard, or is in a battery pack that has better thermal management, is less likely to reach a critical failure point than one where the above is not true. The too long didn't read is that engineering of the pack and the battery management and the way the car treats all of this will play a part in the likelihood that something will or won't go wrong. A good example, the newest battery packs made by LG Energy as found in the ID3 are different to the cells I've already listed and supposedly the same ones found as in the current Renault Zoe. Yet to my knowledge, Renault has had zero battery fires. Right now, I'd not want to buy a car with a battery pack that uses identical cells to those found in the Bolt EV and Kona EV, and because these things are kept pretty secret, it is hard to know for sure. But the ID3 fire, according to many experts, seems to be too quick to be caused by a faulty cell. But again, we need to wait for an official report to draw judgment on that one. If I was looking at an LG Energy Made battery pack for my next EV, which, disclaimer, I am, I'd feel more confident if the battery pack had a larger battery buffer, and the cells themselves were under less strain as a consequence. But then there's how the automaker itself will deal with any recalls. For what it's worth, we think that the Hyundai recall was handled far better than the Chevrolet recall, and that does give us all quite a lot of pause when recommending GM vehicles right now or not, as the case may be. Which brings me to the conclusion. Which LG Energy cars are safe? Are any safe? If you are super cautious and worried about a fire, by all means, steer clear of cars with LG Energy batteries. But a more in-depth way would be to examine each vehicle's battery packs, figure out what the buffers are for each vehicle, and examine how the packs are engineered. A great place to start for this if you're feeling nerdy is watching Munro Live and Weber Auto, both YouTube channels. They do great deep dives on the same. As does Plug Life TV with the lovely Ewan McTurk, who is an electrochemist. We'll make sure that we leave links all to the above below.
Yet we also need to accept that fire risks are a problem for every vehicle, regardless of what powers it. And statistically, most electric vehicles are far less likely to catch fire than an internal combustion engine one. There's been a lot of hyperbole and a lot of fear spread by this, but the reality is that the majority of people out there haven't had a problem and most likely won't. Sure, there is the possibility of having to deal with a recall campaign in the future, but let's be blunt, every car has the potential to have something go wrong with it in the future, and no car manufacturer and no part supplier and no battery supplier has been completely issue free. And while we would steer clear of LG Energy Bolts, it's also worth noting that SK Innovation is likely to pick up some of the slack in the battery supply chain. Volkswagen, Ford and Hyundai are all now signed on to work with SKI instead of LG. At the end of the day, automakers aren't stupid, they are businesses and they will pick the supplier that isn't going to cause them a headache and lots of court cases and recall effort in the future. Right now, I suspect most automakers are looking to alternatives to LG. And of course, when we find out about them, we will let you know. So go on, buy an EV with an LG Energy battery pack if you fancy it but please do some homework first exactly into how the battery pack is set up. And if you're keen on that, we will try to make some videos explaining that to help you. Let us know below if you think that's a good idea. But if the idea of having an LG Energy battery pack in your electric car scares you off, then don't panic. There are some other options. Tesla uses non-LG products for its cars, and a lot of Kia and Hyundai vehicles now coming to market, including vehicles that are already here, like the Kia e Nero, for example, use SK Innovation cells. And other automakers are looking in that direction too. So if in doubt, ask. That's it for today. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and our two other channels, Transport Evolved Take Two and Transport Evolved Shorts. I know that while a fair number of you are subscribed, most of you aren't. So please do make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell and help us out. Let us know what you thought below of the video. And if you're someone who doesn't like the YouTube comment section, I don't, then why not continue this on our Discord server? It is free and we promise we'll leave a link below. Thanks on behalf of the entire TE crew, go out to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month Patreon supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month patrons. They are David Janikula, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahoa, Brophy Wolf, Tesla in the Gong, Paul Conway, Sean Ueda, Gordon C, Ray Jane Fellows, Anonymous Freak, Jim Burness, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Laura Sanborn, Rory Litwin, and Denny Hyde. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, John Lyons, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, Ellery Hensley, and Ian. If you'd like to join the ranks of wonderful supporters, you'll find links below to Patreon, Bitcoin, and Kofi. And of course, you can also buy your very own TE swag, like this t shirt, at our Redbubble store. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving!